Hello world and welcome to a brand new Azure vlog. I hope you're all doing fine. I'm doing well. So today we are going to do a step back from Microsoft Sentinel. And don't worry, it's just for one video because in the upcoming video, we are already talking again about Microsoft Sentinel. In this video, I would like to talk about Azure Firewall and how it can help us protecting the virtual networks that we have running in Azure. I think most of us have a lot of virtual machines, app services, stuff running in uh, the Azure environment. And with Azure Firewall, we can actually protect the network traffic uh, that we have in Azure. So without further ado, um, let's start with our ritual of actually getting a good cup of coffee and then I will show you around. That was a very good cup of coffee. I like it so much. So let's start with a, a question that I uh, got asked often. What is the difference between a Azure Firewall and a network security group? You can compare a network security group to a very basic firewall rule. Open or close a certain port or a certain span of ports. And that's actually all it can do. Whereas Azure Firewall is actually a next generation cloud-based firewall. It allows us to do deep package inspection. It allows us to have management at, at scale. So there is a lot of stuff in there which is not in uh, Azure Firewall. So in this video, we are going to deploy the Azure Firewall and we are going to set up a DNet rule and application rules so we can manage a server and of course have the server go to some spaces on the internet and in those demos you will directly see the difference uh, in relation to network security groups because we can use domain names over there we can use policies to manage stuff at scale which is not in the network security groups I will not say that you should not use network security groups. They are a very basic piece of security that you can get in place to protect your environment uh, at, a, at, a, at a basic level. Um, but hey, the Azure Firewall is actually much more. So let's deploy the thing right now. All right, so welcome at the Azure portal. Let me show you the demo environment that I have, uh, have prepared. I have a Windows virtual machine running and this Windows virtual machine makes use of a centralized virtual network, which is living in the network core resource group. If I click on that uh, VNet, you can see the address space over here. Um, it's just uh, simple. Uh, from the subnets, I have a default subnet and a Azure Firewall subnet that I already have created. So this looks really Cool, and we can now proceed to create the, uh, the firewall. If I click on my resource group over here, that will forward me to the, uh, the resource group where the VNet is living in. If I click on create over here, and I search for firewall, that actually brings me to the Azure firewall uh, item in the Azure Marketplace. 
if I click on create over here, I will be forwarded to the wizard on where I can uh, deploy the, the Azure Firewall. So let's give it a name. GN West EU uh, Firewall 01. It's in West Europe. I don't want to use the availability zones right now. I'm choosing the premium SKU so I can uh, demo you all the stuff in uh, this and the upcoming videos. I need to have a firewall policy. At this moment, I don't have any. And when I click on add new over here, I can create a uh, firewall policy. So let's call it yay and uh, FAP uh, from firewall policy 01. And it's okay to have it in West Europe and it's for premium firewalls. So the firewall policy basically allows us to tie all our rules and stuff to that policy. And we can use that the policy at multiple firewall instances. So that allows us to manage a lot of firewalls at scale. That's really nice, actually. I would like to use an existing virtual network. That's the uh, uh, network that we have created earlier. And I need to have a public IP address, which is not in place right now. So I click on add new over here. I can give it a name. Firewall 01, let's click on OK. Forced tunneling is a uh, feature that allows us to tunnel all the internet facing traffic to let's say a next router, a next BGP endpoint, so to say. Uh, we'll leave this turned off right now. Next up, I can select some uh, tags or add tags to the firewall. I won't do that right now. And here we are. Uh, the configuration is validated and when I click on create, it will actually deploy the firewall. So let's wait a minute until this is all uh, done and I will get back to you. All right, so the firewall is now deployed. If I click on go to resource, that actually brings me to the, uh, the firewall. Okay, now that we have deployed the uh, Azure Virtual Firewall, let's actually have a look at the resource that we are dealing with. If I switch over to my desktop, you'll see the Azure Firewall that I just had deployed. And there's actually not a lot of stuff going on over here. It's important for you to keep note of this private IP address over here and the public IP address over here, because we need them later when we configure DNS to our Azure Virtual Machine and route tables to make sure that traffic is flowing through the firewall. If I switch back to my desktop, th there's actually not a lot to configure over here related to firewall rules and all that kind of stuff. The Azure Firewall makes usage of a, a policy that we also have created. If I click on this firewall policy over here, this is the part where we can configure all kinds of stuff. Here we can configure our DNet rules, network rules, application rules, etc. And we are going to create them within a minute because the Azure Firewall, as soon as we have assigned it to our virtual network, our subnet, it actually blocks all traffic. We can't manage the Azure Virtual uh, Machine directly after uh, we have configured our firewall and from our virtual machine, we can't use the internet basically anymore as everything is blocked. So let's make sure now that we uh, allow network traffic to flow, to flow through the uh, Azure firewall. And after that, we are going to make sure that we can manage our virtual machine by setting up a DNet rule and make sure that we can visit some websites on our virtual machine using application rules. So if I'm in the Azure portal and I search for route table, that actually gives me the, uh, the route tables uh, resource. So with the route table, we are actually able of configuring how the network flows in our network. So what we are going to do is set up a route table and make sure that we have a route available that forwards all traffic from the subnet 
to a network virtual appliance, in our case, the Azure Firewall. Uh, from there, the firewall can route the traffic to the internet or block it, whatever it needs to do. I can create a route table by clicking on create route table. I can uh, give it a name. I will also deploy this in my network core resource group. And the name I will give is uh, JN West UU uh, route table zero one. Let's click on review and create. And let's click on create. And this will, uh, will take a minute to complete. And it's already done. So if I click go to the resource group, we'll see that we have a route table available over here. So if I now go to routes and I click on add over here, I can create a new route. And I will give this a name, for example, firewall, select the destination type, which is a IP address. And here I need to configure 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 slash zero. So this 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash zero subnet actually means all traffic that is going to the internet. So what we are actually configuring in this rule is everything with the destination internet, we will forward that to our network virtual appliance, which I will show you right now. And my next hop type will be a virtual appliance. And this is where I need to enter the IP address of the Azure Firewall. If I now click on add, this route will be added to uh, the route table. Another thing that we need to do is assign this route with our subnet in which the virtual machine is uh, living. If I go to subnets over here and I click on associate, I can select the virtual network and I can select my default subnet in which the virtual machine is living. If I click on OK, the route will now be assigned to my, uh, my subnet. So as soon as you have assigned the network route to the subnet, you will see that you will lose all connections with your server. Azure Firewall is blocking inbound and outbound traffic as a firewall actually should do. It all starts with blocking traffic, so we need to enable stuff. If we switch over to my desktop, I'm, I'm here, here in the, the Azure portal Azure and looking portal. at the firewall policy that is assigned to my firewall. And when I go to DNAT rules, I have added a DNAT rule which allows me to RDP into my server. So what I'm actually saying over here, when you do open a RDP connection to the public IP address of this firewall, forward it request to the uh, IP address over here. This is the IP address of the Windows server that you saw earlier. If I put that server on screen, you'll see it is uh, it, it is the same server but when i go to let's say uh, bbc.com you will see it won't do anything so let's go and continue our configuration a thing that we need to do is configure the dns we need to make sure that all our dns traffic is also going through the azure firewall so we can do all kind of stuff with it from our firewall. So let's do that right now. So I am here in the resource group where my virtual machine is, is living in. When I click on its network interface, I'm able to change the DNS servers, which it uh, is using. If I click over here, I can uh, check the custom button over here and I can add my Azure firewall as DNS server. If I click on save, it will now use the DNS server of the Azure Firewall for this virtual machine. Blocking everything is safe, but 
hey, you probably want to visit a website on your virtual machine or need to connect it to a certain cloud endpoint. So let me show you how we can set up a application rule to allow traffic to the internet. If we switch over to desktop and we go, we to, go our to our firewall, firewall instance, policy, we can set up a application rule over here. I can add a rule collection. Let's say we want to allow Microsoft.com, allow Microsoft. It is a application type of, uh, of rule collection priority. Let's say uh, this is 170. Uh, it is a allow action and we want to make it a member of the default application rule collection group. So let's now set up the, uh, the things that we want to allow. Let's type in allow Microsoft. The IP address, we need to make sure that we uh, put our subnet in here on which the VM is running. In my case, that's 10.0.0.0 slash 24. We want to enable HTTP and HTTPS. And here we allow star.microsoft.com. If I click on add, this rule will be added to this Azure firewall and allows us to visit microsoft.com. So to demo this uh, to you, as you can see, we are in our virtual machine. If I go to example for bbc.com, that will not work. If I now go to Microsoft, microsoft.com with something uh, after the, uh, the domain name, you'll see that this works. So this allows you to regulate to what websites, domain names, um, your virtual machine in your Azure virtual network is, uh, is allowing to. Okay, that's great. We now have the Azure Firewall running. In this video, you saw how I deployed the Azure Firewall and how it actually blocked everything related to our virtual machine. We were not able to manage it anymore and from our virtual machine, all internet traffic to everything was basically blocked. You saw how I set up a DNet rule in order to make sure we can manage our virtual machine. And you saw how I can set up uh, a application rule to go to some places on the internet. In this video, we handled actually the basics related to the Azure Firewall. In my next video, we'll dive a little bit deeper. I'll show you how we can connect the Azure Firewall to let's say Microsoft Sentinel, a seam, and we are going to have a deeper look at the advanced features of the firewall. So with that being said, I hope you like this video. Of course, subscribe to this channel if you like the content, hit the thumbs up button and the notification bell so you know when I've uploaded a, a new video. And of course, I hope to see you in my next video where we dive a little bit more into the advanced stuff of the Azure Firewall. Bye.